Okay, here we are. Tuesday night. It's Titan Tuesday is where we are. A Titan. See yourself as a Titan. Huge. I want to tell you something. Something that is going to be uh, life-changing if you understand it. Because we've been brought up to think that we need to hide. We need to hide and put aside our... Um, lack of a better word, our, our scars, the things that we grew up with that happened to us, we don't want people to know. Look, let's just get, I honestly never understood this. I just didn't fucking get it. But who gives a shit? Because the fact that I didn't get it, here I am now explaining to you guys. Whatever. Here's the point. I never understood why you don't want people to know how shitty your life used to be. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I was a guy that came from another country. When I came to the United States, I was labeled a nerd and a homosexual in fifth grade because I wore the wrong fucking socks and kids in fifth grade in Omaha, Nebraska were very kind to a young man coming from a Middle Eastern country not being able to speak English, looking horrible. My head was probably as big as it is right now. My shoulders were much smaller. And I had enormous glasses. Yeah, I wore contact lenses. And I had the roughest time. And I developed insomnia and social anxiety. I didn't know how to speak English. And as I got a little bit older, my English got a little bit better. I got beat up in school. I got picked on. And I had no idea how to talk to girls, but I had a crush on girls. Especially the white girl, because she was a rarity for me, right? It's always what you can't have that you want, right? And I struggled like a motherfucker, man. And I struggled like a motherfucker. I was always very intelligent, and I was always... I knew I was from a different place. I've always known that. I just didn't know how the fuck to interact with the fucking human race, you know, I didn't know how to interact with the society, I didn't get why they were so fucking cruel, I was trying my best, man, trying my best, and then when I started my business, well, I fast forwarded hugely, when I started my business, I was broke for eight years, eight years I was broke, when I say broke, what does that mean, that means I would, I bought a big piece of bread in the morning, and that would be my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I would go to McDonald's or Wendy's and steal ketchup packets and put that for flavor. And my parents would send me tuna when I lived in L.A. And Top Ramen was a uh, luxury and tuna. I didn't. I lived. I, I lived uh, in L.A. for a year, and I had no refrigerator. I had no TV. I had no bed. My house was a, a hallway. Two bedrooms, my roommate and myself. In my room, there was a sleeping bag on the floor and a blanket. And there was books all around the walls. And there was a boombox that would play music. And I had a phone. I couldn't even afford water. I remember Fiji water was what I wanted. And I could go on and on and on and on. And I am very proud of what I've accomplished because of where I've been. And my fingers don't work. I'm making a fist with this hand. And I'm making a fist with this hand. Why? Because I cut my fingers in a knife accident. I was practicing with a knife and I cut the tendons and these fingers don't bend. My nose is crooked and my ears are cauliflowered. From Jiu Jitsu. <clears throat> and my teeth aren't very straight. Okay? And I'm short. I'm 5'7. Five, 5'7 seven. Five, seven on a good day. I go in half an inch or some shit. With all that, I'm the number one pickup and seduction artist in the world. And I could have the most beautiful women in the world when I want them. That's what makes me special. And the fact that I was broke for eight years, but now I own four businesses. I own six businesses. Four of them 
are locations you can find. Two of them are online. But I was broke for eight years. And I was in a relationship for seven and a half years prior, not the one I'm in now. And it was shit. And I was in a relationship for two and a half years and it was even worse. And I'm proud of everything I just said. And that's why I can teach. And that's why I have sympathy for people and empathy. That's why I get it. And that's why I'm strong. Because I've overcome these things. And you need to own who you are. All the struggles you've been through is part of who you are. Be proud. I never understood this. Do you really fucking think being on planet Earth in the current time that we are, you didn't go through shit? You're going to walk around and pretend? You're going to pretend? Oh, no, what the fuck is wrong with you? We all have our shitty stories. My story is bad, but it's not as bad as some people that I know. Some of these girls that you see at IMC, the instructors, have some of the most terrible, upsetting pasts you could ever think about. And look at them. Look at how powerful, beautiful, confident they are. Try to fuck with them. I just step back. I don't any longer need to step in to defend them. I will. If a force strong enough comes in, I'll defend against God and the devil. That's all I'll defend against. I'll put the angels to shame. I'll put demons in their fucking place. But humans can't fuck with my group. They can handle it. I love the person who's been tested and broken. Who's been bent. We're broken. We're not broken, just bent, right? Pink. Because that person is a survivor. You have to be proud of the fact that you're still here, still doing it, somehow. Somebody messaged me online and said they have a scar on their body, in the middle of their body. And they're embarrassed of it. They to take off their shirt. How do I feel about it? I said, you don't need to be embarrassed of that. It's awesome. He's like, no, I'm embarrassed around girls. I said, no, own it. You're a survivor. And he said, well, maybe I could tell them that um, it happened in a knife fight. Because that would be kind of cool. I said, okay, but it's way cooler what happened to you. A knife is just a human being trying to take your life. This, this was death itself. You survived death itself. You are beyond a survivor. Even death couldn't take you as a child. You're fucking blessed. And I meant every word of it. I meant every word of it. It's the fact that my hand is like this, and I'm still a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. One of the hardest, if not the hardest, martial art to get a black belt in. Getting it from the best instructor in the world. Like this. This happened in the beginning of my career. And the fact that my knee doesn't work. I could still make you fucking videos and show you how I kick and nobody would even know how many fucking times I'd bend my fingers back and broke them because they couldn't fucking pull back. That's what makes me fucking special. I'm a motherfucking survivor and I know it. And I'd be damned, I'd be damned if anybody could take shit away from me. And that's how you have to be. I recommend you take every fucking bad thing that's happened to you and you put it out. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be ashamed of for surviving. You understand that? The fact that you're trying to hide it and someone can come and tell you. One of my good friends was showing me a picture of herself. She was like, oh my God, look at me in middle school. She was, she was a fat lard ball. And right now her body is perfect head to toe. If I was going to pick four girls that I know that have a perfect body, she would be one of them. And she works at IMC. I said, show the picture. To the world. Says, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, how the fuck are you embarrassed? People need to see what you used to look like. Look at what you look like right now. The moment you own it. Now you have a different level of power. 
because no longer are you embarrassed of what? Of your survival? You're embarrassed of the fact that you fucking made it? You're embarrassed? Sometimes you have shitty situations. I, I know people, I know girls whose parents, whose, whose biological parents were some of the most disgusting human beings that could ever walk this planet. I'm talking, take a mother or take a father or both in, in, a, in one of their cases. And they were some of the most disgusting, despicable human beings on the planet. Doing things to a child that's evil and forbidden. Take the worst things you can think of and that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know people like that in my life. And I appreciate them for that. That with all that, they're still inspiring people. They're still making shit happen. And they survived that shit. And then I look at my life and I'm like, whoa, I thought I had a fucking bad past. I don't compare to that. But it's my job to make sure that they see their true strength. They have to see their true power. That's a powerful child to go through those traumatic experiences. And still be able to, as an adult, walk around, inspire, shine, smile, and make the world a better place. Some of my friends have lost their parents at a young age. How the fuck did they do it? My own dad lost his mom and dad by the time he was 12 years old. Both gone. How the fuck do you do it? How the fuck do you do it? I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by how strong and how powerful we can be. I'm obsessed and I'm addicted to finding out who we truly are and what our real power is. I don't want to know why we can't do something. It's none of my fucking business. Anybody else's limitation is not my fucking business. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Just like the people who, who discovered and harnessed the power of electricity. Whoever that is. Because the, the history is a lie. And the people who gave us the power of flight. Whoever the fuck that is. Somebody did. I'm sure as fuck glad they didn't fucking listen to people. And I, as sure as fuck, don't want to listen to your fucking limitations of why you can't do shit. If there's something you can't do, keep that shit to yourself. Or go, go fucking, go flush it in the fucking toilet. But don't come and fucking tell me. I want to know what you can do. I want to know what you're going to do that hasn't been done before. That's going to help mankind. That's what I want to know. It has to have that as part of the equation it has to have helping as part of the equation when the fuck are you gonna get that your responsibility is that whatever your skills are I like when people fucking email me like I just got an email right now and it's like, I just shared something with you, task log. Like, well, okay, let's understand something. I can use YouTube. I can use Facebook. I'm getting good at Twitter. Instagram. I don't fucking know anything else with computers. I don't get it. Don't email me shit that I don't understand. I don't get 90% of my emails because I don't even want to, I don't even like opening e emails. They're ugly to me. The, the shape of an email when it opens is fucking ugly. There's nothing aesthetic. There's nothing beautiful. I hate it. And the fact that so many goddamn companies email you with so much bullshit, it makes me just throw up when I get a fucking email. Don't fucking email me. If you have to, because there's no other way to get a hold of me, fine. But make the subject line something very fucking enticing. A rush or a god or some shit. Something makes me want to fucking open that shit, man. What the fuck, man? Okay. Hold on, hold on. Instagram is fucking gay, man. I just use it because it's just part of what I gotta do, I guess, you know? But I can stand that bullshit. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying now? I know you do. Let it sink in. Let it get absorbed by every cell in your body. If you're watching this, you're a fucking survivor and you've been through shit. You have been through shit. 
If you had social anxiety, the world should know. If you were fat, the world should know. If you were tiny, the world should know. If you were broke, the world should know. If you, if your parents beat on you every fucking day and chain you to a fucking wall, we want to fucking know. We want to know. We want to know what your problems were and how you overcame them. That's why we want to know. We don't want you to sit there and bitch anymore. We don't want to sit there and hear someone bitch about their problems anymore. We all have fucking problems. Every living creature on planet Earth has problems. What we want to know is how you overcame them. What makes you strong. That's what makes you unique. That's what makes you unique. Understand? Stop hiding your scars, your battle scars. Be proud of them. I'm proud of my ears. These are scars. Tattoos are scars. They cut into your body with fucking needle and insert ink. Be strong. No more of that fucking... You've been, you're so damaged, but you're not going to tell everyone. You're going to pretend like you were fucking drawn in some princess fucking cartoon. And even they have problems. Listen, no. 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 Okay, no. That's enough. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of the shit you've been through. Let the fucking world know about it. But don't whine about it. Don't whine about it. Show them that this is why you're strong. Because even death couldn't fucking take some of you guys. That's how strong you fucking are. You've survived shit that nobody else could fucking survive. That's how it is. So you give hope to other people. Don't hide that shit. See you tomorrow on the blogs.